Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hand in Hand with God, a flowing fountain lifestyle. We're glad you chose to come today. Let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll delve into the Word of God. Father God, we thank you for your loving kindness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you, God, for your hand upon our lives this week and how you kept us safe and that your favor, Father, was evident in our lives, God. We thank you, Father, for everything you've done for us, Lord, and thank you for the freedom that we have to come together in a corporate setting to praise and worship you and to learn more about you, Father. Lord God, we dedicate this time to you, and I pray, Lord, that we've prepared our hearts to receive from you, God. Lord, I pray that all spiritual blinders would be off of eyes and ears, and our hearts would be open to see and hear and receive what you have to say to us today, Father, so that we can apply it to our lives. Lord, I pray that I'd be attentive to the Holy Spirit and say what you want me to say, Father. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, once again, I welcome you to Hand in Hand with God. My name is Daryl Clawson, and I'll be sharing the Word of God with you today. Today's sermon is entitled, Make Him Your King. A king is someone who has the ultimate authority within his jurisdiction. The question you're going to address during today's sermon is, who is the king of my life? If we look at kings and kingdoms, we would notice that a kingship is hereditary unless there is a battle in which the king was overthrown. For an example, let's look at England's monarchy. Right now we have Queen Elizabeth II, who has the ruling authority as queen. When she passes away or retires, her eldest son, Prince Charles, will be crowned king. After the life of Prince Charles, or he chooses to retire, then his eldest son, Prince William, will become king. After Prince William, it will be his eldest son, Prince George, who will be crowned the King of England. Believe it or not, you have a dominion that you oversee, and you have the privilege of choosing who you want to rule over that dominion. The dominion that you oversee is your life. Unlike the king of a nation who receives his kingship because of his bloodline, and he is next in line for the throne, you have three choices from which you can choose who will be the king of your life. Here are the three choices from which you have to choose. You yourself can be the king over your life. You can choose a satanic entity to rule over your life, or you can choose Jesus Christ to be the king of your life, who, by the way, won the spiritual battle so that he can sit as king over your life if you so choose. The wisest decision is to choose to have Jesus Christ as the king of your life. Yourself as king. When you choose to have yourself as the king of your life, you're setting yourself up for spiritual failure because you will continue to live your life doing what your flesh wants you to do, all the while ignoring what God wants you to do. Setting yourself up as king over your life means that you are declining assistance from Jesus, therefore also the Holy Spirit. And as such, you will not receive the assistance of the Holy Spirit to overcome your sinful actions, words, and thoughts. Let's take a look and see what activities we partake in when we choose to have ourselves as the king over our dominion. Galatians 5, verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies, and verse 21, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which 
I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. When you are the king of your life, you do things which displease God. However, because you are the king of your life, it won't matter to you if you are doing things that displease God, because you have made yourself king, and what the king says goes. If you are wondering if you have placed yourself as the king of your life, the following list is what you will find yourself doing. And I took it from Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21. When you rule your life, you will commit adultery, there will be hatred in your life, fornication, you'll partake in sin, you'll lust, idolatry will be evident in your life, witchcraft and murder, you will be in disagreement or conflict with others, you'll be selfish and have selfish ambitions, you'll envy others, wrath will be evident in your words and actions, you'll carouse, there will be strife in your life, divisions in your life, you'll believe heresies, and you'll get drunk lots. Satanic Entity as King When there is a satanic entity as the king ruling over your life, it means that you have a satanic stronghold in your life. It is worse to have a satanic stronghold ruling your life than for you yourself to be ruling your life, because your life will be worse off with a satanic entity in charge than if you were in charge yourself. An example of someone who has a satanic entity in charge over their life is someone who is dealing with addictions. My guess is that for the most part, due to Satan's subtlety, the individual whose life is being ruled by a satanic stronghold doesn't even realize that they surrendered the authority of their life over to Satan. A satanic stronghold in the individual's life causes their life to revolve around that stronghold. For example, any addiction, whether it be relationships, food, shopping, drugs or alcohol, it is a satanic stronghold and it may even have taken control of the individual's life either through choices that the individual made, life experiences of the individual, or what's known as generational curses. If an individual has had a poor relationship with either of their parent, that person may be trying to find a healthy relationship, but it's going about it all wrong because of the satanic stronghold in their life. The same is true with any satanic stronghold. Somehow, the individual has allowed that satanic entity to take control of his or her life simply because he or she did not turn to Jesus to be the solution to that matter in their life. The problem is that if an individual chooses to attempt to overcome the satanic entity or stronghold with their own strength, he or she will not be successful because freedom from a satanic stronghold cannot be done in our strength or our way. There is only one choice that will bring freedom to an individual's life who is under the control of a satanic entity. This is the choice that makes all the difference in our lives, us choosing to turn to Jesus to be the solution to the problems in our life. Due to the fact that we all have the option to make this choice, it does not matter how or why the satanic stronghold got the position of king in our life, nor can we blame other people for what has happened or the satanic strongholds that have developed in our life. Generational curses are satanic strongholds that are in an individual's life because of their family tree. What would have happened is that one of the individual's ancestors partook in an evil activity, thus giving the demonic entities authority to operate in the lives of their descendants. Another way in which an individual surrenders control of their life over to a satanic entity 
is by repeatedly partaking in the same sin without asking God to forgive them of that sin and not working with the Holy Spirit to stop falling for the temptation to do that sin. For an example, a man who is addicted to pornography may have started looking at and lusting over lingerie models, which over a period of time developed into his addiction to pornography, thus allowing that demon of pornography to have a stronghold in his life, therefore ruling his life. The only way to dethrone a satanic entity from being king over your life is to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and to make him the king of your life. <coughs> Prior to looking at how we can be delivered from any satanic stronghold, we will first look at Ephesians 6 verse 12, which reads, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. This is a biblical proof which informs us that if there is a satanic stronghold in your life, then the battle to overcome them or it is spiritual, not physical. In other words, you can't use willpower to overcome a satanic stronghold. In light of who you want to be the king over your life, you cannot go from having a satanic entity ruling your life to having yourself rule over your life. But you can go from you ruling your life to having a satanic entity having control over your life just based on the choices that you have made, how you have responded to things that have happened in your life or the satanic activity that an ancestor has been involved in. The good news is that even though you cannot go from having a satanic stronghold as king over your life to you ruling over your life, there is one option for you to have deliverance over the satanic stronghold or strongholds that may be in your life. This option is to choose Jesus Christ to be the king of your life. Let's look at Revelation 12, verse 11, which reads, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. We as individuals can only overcome Satan in our life by the blood of Jesus Christ, the word of our testimony, and by not loving our lives, which is demonstrated in choosing Jesus to be the king over our life and doing what he wants us to do, even if that means that we be martyred for our faith in Jesus Christ. The way that you have the blood of Jesus working for you so that you can overcome the satanic stronghold or strongholds is to ask God to forgive you of your sins because of the blood that Jesus Christ shed on Calvary. In doing so, you will become a Christian. And once you become a Christian, you can plead the blood of Jesus over your life and ask him to be the king of your life. As soon as you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you, and you can commence the process of eliminating the satanic strongholds in your life. To eliminate the satanic stronghold from your life, you would ask God to reveal them to you and ask him to forgive you of the sin affiliated with each stronghold. And then you can plead the blood of Jesus over the affected aspects of your life and ask the Holy Spirit to fill that aspect of your life so that it doesn't leave a void which would allow Satan and his demons to regain possession of that stronghold. Jesus is king. Making Jesus the king of your life is the best decision that you can do throughout your lifetime. When Jesus is the king of your life, you surrender your life to him and you do what he wants you to do. This means that you are no longer doing the sinful acts that you used to do and may still want to do, which is called living in the flesh. Instead, you are living in the spirit, which means that you are obeying the Holy Spirit 
through your words and actions. When you surrender the kingship of your life to Jesus, your words and actions will demonstrate God's character. This means that you will love the Lord your God with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. You will also love your neighbor as yourself and demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit through your words and actions. Therefore, you will be living by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Let's look at Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. Verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Verse 25, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let's take a closer look at what will become evident through your words and actions when you have chosen Jesus Christ to be the King of your life. When Jesus rules your life, you will see the following things in your words and your actions. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith. You'll be meek. You'll be patient. You'll have self-control. You'll obey the Holy Spirit. You will not want useless glory. That would be praise from people. You will not provoke others, and you will not envy others. In conclusion, the choice is yours. Of the three options, you can only choose one to be the king of your life. This choice is nothing new, because it is the same choice that humans have faced ever since God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree in the Garden of Eden. The choice which you are facing today is the same choice that Joshua gave the Israelites when they were about ready to enter into the Promised Land. Here are his words from Joshua 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The good news is that if, even up to this point in your life, you have chosen yourself or a satanic entity to be the king of your life, you can still choose to have Jesus Christ be the king of your life. When you make Jesus the king of your life, you will experience in your life changes within your thoughts, words, and actions, because you will no longer be under the authority of your fleshly desires or a satanic entity, because you will then be under the authority of Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Let's pray. If God has placed something on your heart, you can take that up with him directly. As for the rest of us, we can pray a corporate prayer. The words will be on the screen, and in this prayer, there's the opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we will talk to God about Jesus being the King of our life. So, if you don't mean this prayer, you can just stay silent. The words will be on the screen. Let's pray. Lord God, you are the only wise God. You are in a class all by yourself. There is none like you because you are the only holy, true, eternal and almighty God and I worship you for those reasons amongst others. Heavenly Father, I confess that I have sinned against you and repenting of my sins I ask God that you forgive me of all my sins because I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son who died for my sins and whom you raised from the dead. Father God, I surrender my life to you, making Jesus the Lord of my life, and I ask that you would fill and baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Father God, after looking at these Bible verses which we looked at today, 
I ask that you forgive me for not making Jesus the king of my life earlier. Therefore, I surrender the dominion of my life to Jesus Christ so that he will now be the king of my life. I choose to live the rest of my life led by the Spirit instead of by the flesh and will not dethrone Jesus Christ from being the king of my life. Lord God, regarding any satanic strongholds in my life, I ask that you would reveal them to me so that I can address them with the Holy Spirit and be delivered from them. Father God, I thank you that Jesus is now the king of my life and I look forward to the changes that are going to take place in my life because it is no longer I nor a satanic entity which is the king of my life. I pray this to you, Father God, because you are the eternal God who reigns supreme. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll close with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the relationship that we have with you, Father God. Lord, we thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the fairest of ten thousands, Father, and you are the only wise God. Lord, I thank you that when we put our lives in your hands, God, we're putting them in good, trustworthy hands, and that we can trust you to lead us where you want us to go, Father. I pray, Lord God, that each of us chooses to follow you from this day forward, God, fulfilling the destiny that you have for us and having an influence on the people that you bring across our paths for your name's sake, Father. Lord God, as we part ways and live our week this week, God, I pray that each of us chooses to surrender the week to you, Father God, and that we see your hand of faithfulness and your favor in our lives, Father. Pray, Lord God, that you touch each and every one of our bodies, Father God, and heal us, Lord God, and restore unto our lives the years that Satan has stolen from us, Father. We thank you for your faithfulness, Father God, and we praise you for all the things that you've done in us and for us and through us. And we ask that you keep us safe and bring us back safely next week, Father God. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. The passage of scripture I'd like to leave with you. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 8 to 10. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, Who hath died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. First Thessalonians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the early church in Thessalonica. The context of this passage is the church waiting for the day when Christ returns to bring God's children home. Here the Apostle Paul is encouraging the Christians to be alert and to be ready for when Christ comes to pick up the children of God and take them home. As Christians, we are to wear our breastplate of faith and love. Keep in mind that the breastplate of faith is a part of our armor of God which protects us during spiritual warfare. We are also to make sure that we have our helmet, which is another aspect of the armor of God and represents the hope of our salvation. When the helmet of salvation is on our head, we are protected from Satan's mental attacks against us as he would attempt to have us doubt our salvation or who we are in Christ Jesus. As children of God, we are not in line to experience his anger. On the contrary, we receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, through our salvation, through Christ Jesus, we are spared from God's wrath when it is poured out upon a sinful world. As a matter of fact, it is Christ Jesus who died for us so that we Christians whether we will have passed away or are alive, 
when Christ returns for his bride, will live together with him. As you live your Christian life, never forget that this time on earth is only temporary, and because of our relationship with God through Christ Jesus, we have the privilege of looking forward to eternity with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <coughs> with all that said, thank you guys for coming. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Continue to nurture your relationship with God because that's the best relationship that you can have. So go with God throughout the week. Keep your spiritual eyes open so you can see what he's doing in your life and give him praise and glory for all the things that he does for you on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for coming and go with God. God bless you guys.